Okay, let's look at this grade 8 maths question from your lockdown task. This is one of the geometry questions. And as you can see with these little parallel line markings, it's clearly a parallel line question. Okay, use the figure below to answer the questions that follow here. So here's the figure. So like I said to you, before you start anything with a geometry question, you should probably go and fill out all the things that you know, okay? So the interesting thing here is, if I highlight these parallel lines, okay, here is the one line, and here is the other line that is parallel to it. If you have a look here, I've actually got two transversals crossing this. Can you see here is a transversal? So if I were to continue these blue lines, okay, see the blue line? If I continue it, there is the one transversal crossing it. This green one, can you see? USR is one transversal. And then there's a second transversal crossing it. This one over here. Okay. So when we answer these questions, we have to look at them in the context of which transversal is crossing the line. So what I like to do before I start any geometry question is I like to think for myself what is going on here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and label as many things as I can. So let's go back here. Here's my one parallel line. Here is my other parallel line. And here is this transversal. And if you have a look here, do you remember there are those things called F angles on parallel lines? And if you come down here, can you see I have an upside down F? And angle 48 is corresponding to angle B. So before I go anywhere, I know that B equals 48 degrees. So we can write this in here, 48 degrees. Okay, so that's the one set of parallel lines to think about. Then if I have a look at this, if I get rid of all my markings here, hang on, let's see if I can rub this one out. Okay. I've le left those two together. Can you see if you have a look here, and I look at my parallel line here and my transversal and my parallel line. Angle A and angle C are alternate angles on parallel lines because can you see they are making the Z or if you prefer you can call it an N but I can see the Z fairly clearly here. So whatever angle C is, angle A is going to be equal to it. So of these two, Angle C is the easier one to find. Why do I say that? Because if I cast my eyes on this shape again, let's have a look here if we rub everything out. If I cast my eye on this shape again, I actually have here also a straight line. Can you see the straight line? And this angle here. So this angle is adjacent to 154 and they're on a straight line. And angles on a straight line equal 180. So angle C is going to be 180 degrees minus 154 degrees because they are angles on a straight line equal 180. Okay, so 180 minus 54, do you believe, is 26 degrees. Okay, let's just check that. Yes. Okay, so remember what I said. Now, if this is 26 degrees... Remember that if you have a look here, I've got this nice Z and angle A is equal to angle C. So this is 26 degrees over there. Then angle D, there are two ways to look at angle D. So if we rub everything out here, okay. If you have a look here, we've got 48 and 26. Angle D, if I color this in here, can you see? Let's switch to blue. This shape here is a triangle in here. All of this in here is one single triangle. So angle D would be the third angle of this triangle. 
So if we had to calculate it, angle D equals 180 degrees minus 26 plus 48 degrees. Because this is this corner 26 degrees and this corner 48 degrees and D is the third angle. So if we take these two away from 180, we'll be left with our answer. So this is 180 degrees minus what's 26 plus 48 I'm ending now here with, I will get D is 106 degrees. And it looks like it could be bigger than 90 degrees, so that would be a good idea. Okay, so let's have a look at the questions here. Determine the size of angle B, give a reason for your answer. Remember I said to you right at the beginning, there were these F angles over here. So angle B equals 48 degrees because they are corresponding angles on parallel lines. Okay, calculate the size of angle C, give a reason for your answer. So angle C, let's go 5.3.2, angle C equals 180 degrees minus 154 degrees, which is 26 degrees. And the reason is angles on a straight line. And we can write, if we like, instead of saying add up to 180, we can say angles on a straight line are supplementary because that is the other nice word for adding up to 180. Okay. So we've done 5.3.1, 5.3.2. 5.3.3, 3 .3, determine the size of A. Remember we said if we look at A, Remember here, let's change the highlighter color. We said parallel line, transversal, parallel line, angle A and angle C are alternate angles. Okay, we, so we can say angle C equals angle A, which is equal to 26 degrees because alternate angles on parallel lines. Whoopsie, those parallel don't look very parallel. Never mind. Okay, alternate angles on parallel lines are equal. Now, 5.3.4, calculate the size of D. 5.3.4, angle D. Which one was angle D? It was this one over here, and we did the calculation over there. So angle D equals 106 degrees, and we can say angle sum of a triangle, because remember that blue triangle, it's the last angle of the blue triangle, or I would accept, because you knew A was 26, you can say also angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. And there we go. We've solved all of this geometry quite easily.